Blog Talk Radio. Of interviews, Stephanie Bannister told Seven News Islam was a country and shared her unique understanding of the big issues. Stephanie Bannister is a migrant, an alleged criminal, Hello, Stephanie Bannister. Hello. and at 27, One Nation's poster girl for young voters in Rankin. I don't oppose Islam as a country. Um, but I do feel that their laws should not be welcome here in Australia. The religion is at the centre of her political beliefs. The mother of two from Kingston wants halal food banned. Less than 2% of um, Australians follow haram. Or the Quran, as the Islamic text is known. Kosher food for Jewish Australians is fine. Um, Jews aren't under haram. They have their own religion, which um, follows Jesus Christ. Judaism rejects Jesus Christ. Just like Islam, it has its own dietary law and food certification. They don't have a tax on it. They've just got a, a certain way of making it where haram has a tax on the food. Kosher has a fee too. NDIS, where do you stand on that? Do you want the national disability scheme? Um, I believe that the disability um, scheme is working at the moment. It doesn't start until 2016. I like to see the government drop its five-star budget down to an economy budget. With the way the economy is going at the moment, I don't see why the government feels that it should remain at a five-star budget when the economy is just as good. The candidate is facing criminal charges accused of plastering anti-Muslim stickers like halal food funds terrorism on Nestle products at a supermarket in Logan. The Electoral Commission will decide if Mrs Bannister can run. Candidates are disqualified if they've been convicted or about to be sentenced to jail. She's about to reappear in court. The seat the mother wants stretches from Regent's Park to Rochdale South with opponents like... I'm still learning all the names of people in politics. The LNP's David Lynn and Labor's Jim Chalmers are contesting Rankin. As a trained welder, Stephanie Bannister says she's used to heat. You've got a lot to learn. Oh, definitely, and everyone in the world has a lot to learn about day-to-day -day stuff, and it's, everything in life is just about learning. Erin Edwards, 7 News. This is Boston Red on the 12th day of August 2013. And this is uh, BR on the World, our international news program. We started out with Stephanie Bannister, who is running on the One Nation Party in Australia. We will continue here with news uh, from the Americas. Uh, we have a very important... Well, first of all, we'll, we'll follow this up with... Uh, an interesting situation at the Missouri State Fair over the weekend in Sandraya, Missouri. Missouri is in the Midwest uh, part of the U.S. There was a clown that was put out there in an, an, uh, a mass of President Obama. And he was supposed to be run down by the clown. You can see it in the uh, picture uh, here. We'll go uh, to the, uh, we got the screen version up here now. Okay. But nonetheless, this, this was the uh, offset of what was going on here uh, in uh, Missouri. And, of course, it was denounced by the political leadership and the Rodeo Association. The purpose of a clown is to divert the bull. Uh, many in Europe are at least familiar with the Spanish bullfighting where the bull gores the uh, individual. The purpose of these clowns are to distract uh, the uh, the bull. But the theme here uh, is basically the same. The announcer was, uh, as one would say, uh, urging it on. We're going to smoke uh, Obama. The announcer said, I'm looking at it from the Kansas City Star, a paper in Kansas City, Missouri, in the heartland of America. What has happened here, uh, basically, we've had encouragement from such uh, political actors as Donald Trump, the billionaire. He has been one that has uh, been very prominent in the so-called uh, birther uh, movement uh, out there. And this has uh, been a firestorm, quite literally, uh, from newspapers from the one in Kansas City, and all over the nation, uh, there has been a reaction to this particular clown show. 
But uh, one has to understand that these clown shows are basically performed uh, all over in the American political scene, which is a little bit uh, different than what we are used to uh, seeing. But uh, we need to kill that. Uh, well, we'll let it go ahead with it, and you will listen to this, and our regular audience uh, will uh, listen to me. Nonetheless, this particular act was disgusting, revolting, etc. Uh, it's beamed all over the world via social media. So now the people of the U.S. know what the state of Missouri is in the Midwest is all about. Uh, we have that. It's the uh, home state, incidentally, of the broadcaster Rush Limbaugh. So we'll continue on here uh, with other uh, items. Uh, in New York, the center of uh, much media attention in the U.S., we had a very important decision today on something called stop and frisk, and you can see it on the mixed monitor here, the plaintiff in uh, one of the stop and frisk uh, rules, lawsuits, I'm, I'm, excuse me, Leroy uh, Dowsness, you know, it was a plaintiff, <coughs> excuse me, uh, holding a news conference there. We'll have more of this on Boston Red uh, later uh tonight early in the morning in a repudiation I'm reading from the New York Times here of a major element of Bloomberg's administration crime fighting legacy of federal judges found that stop and frisk tactics of the New York uh, police department violate the constitutional rights of minorities in New York and called for a federal monitor to uh, oversee broad reform in a blasting decision judge uh, Shira Shindelin found that the police department had adopted a policy of indirect racial profiling that targeted young minority men for stops. The mayor of Bloomberg said the city would appeal the ruling, angrily accusing the judge of deliberately not giving the city a fair trial. He's a liar. The city cited that the benefits of stop and frisk. Well, this is reminiscent of the same thing uh, that uh, the Führer, the leader of the German state under the, the Nazis, uh, Hitler said he called for law and order, and they did, in fact, have law and order. But his tactics would have not, as they say, risen to the threshold of the U.S. There's no doubt about that. Uh, courts and Narwhal uh, Bloomberg's uh, there. They, they may be benefits. The judge in her ruling, uh, Shindelin, uh, found that in doing so, the police uh, systematically stopped innocent people in the streets without any uh, objective reason to suspect them of wrongdoing. The stops, which soared in number over the last decade as crime continues to decline, demonstrate a widespread disregard for the Fourth Amendment. In the U.S., there is a Fourth Amendment to the Constitution which prohibits uh, unreasonable search and seizures by the government, as well as the 14th Amendment's what's called the Equal uh, Protection Clause. Judge Schindling's uh, criticism extended beyond the conduct of police officers in holding the city liable for battery of unconstitutional violation. The judge found that top police officials acted with deliberate indifference. She said that police commanders were content to dismiss allegations of racial profiling as a myth created by the media. Citing statements by the mayor and police commissioner Raymond Kelly. Now, this Raymond Kelly uh, was in line to be uh, the uh, head of the Homeland Security. He will not make the muster after this. Judge Schindelin accused the city of using stop and frisk as a checkpoint style policing uh, tactic with the intent uh, of deterring minorities from carrying guns on the street. I also conclude the city's highest officials have turned a blind eye to the evidence that officers were conducting stop uh, in a racially discriminatory manner, she said. There's no doubt about that. The judge designated outside the lawyer, Peter uh, Zimmerfroff, uh, to monitor this. He's what's called in the U.S. a uh, special monitor. He's with Arnold and Porter 
a law firm. He's a former corporate counsel and a prosecutor in the Manhattan District Attorney's Office that's in New York. The judge found that police were uh, too quick to deem as suspicious behavior that was perfectly innocent, in effect, watering down a legal standard standard required for stop. Well, there was no legal standard in this particular issue, and the problem is now is much broader for the U.S. with what happened in Sedalia, Missouri, and what's happening here, and what's happening uh, uh, across the U.S. in terms of police and profiling young uh, youth of color. We saw that in the uh, Trevon Martin uh, murder trial down in Florida. We see instances of it all over. One latest instance was in the Midwest state of Minnesota where some white police officers asserted their constitutional rights to call uh, African Americans the N-word. Unbelievable. But this sort of thing is happening and it is rampant and it uh, must stop here now. She emphasized what she called the human toll of unconstitutional stops, noting that some of the plaintiffs testified that their encounters with the police left them feeling that uh, they did not belong in certain years of the city. She characterized each stop as a demeaning and humiliating experience. This is a similar uh, plight that uh, people on the West Bank in occupied Palestine mm. have, and it is time that people bring this to the attention that it is, uh, as some of the people would say, uh, social democrats, not only morally, long, morally wrong, but it's a violation of the UN's Declaration of Human Rights. That, no doubt, is one of the uh, situations that uh, is occurring from the occupied West Bank to New York City to the Midwest uh, and all over that uh, policing has got out of hand. And in the case of the uh, Palestinian occupation, we have it so out of hand that it works with the UN and the Israeli uh, state, the Zionist state, is uh, presented as humane, as civilized, and according to the uh, defeated Republican candidate Willard Romney, they were the most civilized people uh, in the Mideast, and he went on to expand upon that. Of course, he lost the election. But nonetheless, uh, when you have uh, 4.43 million people stopped, between uh, 2004 and 2012. That is many people. And 88% uh, uh, stopped were African Americans and Latinos. So that only leaves 12% of other. Targeting young uh, African Americans and Latino men for stops based upon alleged criminal conduct of others, African American or Latino, violates the bedrock uh, principle of equality. Judge Schindling uh, ruled, finding that the police department pressed this, uh, violated the 14th Amendment's equal protection clause. There's no doubt about this, but the unfortunate situation is that Bloomberg has been able to portray himself as a quote-unquote moderate or in some quarters a liberal. He ran a liberal party ticket. He goes around talking about uh, gun control and... Uh, banning the use of um, the consumption of fat-causing soda, or tonics, as we'd say, in New England. But many of these people that taunt themselves as progressives that you will read, or those of you outside of North America, in various uh, so-called progressive uh, outlets, including the New York Times, the Huffington Post, etc., regimes uh, in states uh, that have so-called liberal uh, governance, uh, governors in cities like the one in the Midwest there, uh, Minneapolis, that has a quote-unquote uh, liberal mayor, one of the first to endorse President Obama, but at the same time has the most racist mayoral administration in the continental U.S. The unemployment figures there for African Americans is much more dismal than Jackson, Mississippi, a state that's still partially under apartheid. There is no excuse for this in 2013 to exist across the regions. And they have the audacity to point 
to what's going on in Zimbabwe with the election there, the re-election of uh, President Mugabe and quote-unquote of irregularities. Whereas in the U.S. here, we have stop and frisk. We have voter ID systematically uh, purging uh, people that are eligible to vote from the voter rolls in places like Florida, making it much harder in those uh, apartheid states. The state that contains Sanford, Florida, for people to vote, the same in Texas, and there's a long list of states. And in other states, using various other schemes, uh, like uh, voting schemes called ranking, to rank one, two, three, and at the same time to disenfranchise their uh, people of color communities because of what they claim are the complexities. The problem is when you use a ranking system, it takes much longer to rank the candidates. That uh, is a fact, and it's not an efficient system, but they're not planning on that. If you've seen the uh, the movie, and we intended to talk a little about that, uh, about, I believe it's 2124, have to go back to that uh, particular one. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it's, it's set in Mexico. It's bilingual. The actor Matt Damon is there. And uh, it basically talks about the rich fleeing the U.S. to go to another continent, sort of like a Gidi community. And that is where they are, as they say, living out. And the unemployed and less desirable, if they make it there by accident, is then you have to have a space vehicle to get there, and you have to block their uh, senses. But if you're able to do that, they put you in jail and deport you back to Earth. It's set on a literally a trash heap in Mexico City. So it was a very hard uh, film to make. But this is the reality in Stop and Frisk uh, New York. So people have to understand what's going on. It's, a, it's the reality on the West Bank in Palestine. It is not the reality in Zimbabwe. In Syria, the fight continues. The same forces that are uh, sponsoring uh, the Morgan Chanarai in uh, Zimbabwe are the ones uh, sponsoring the bandits in Syria. This is Boston Red for Boston Red on the World on the... 12th day of August 2013 we'll see you uh, tomorrow morning on uh, Boston Red check out our RSS feed check us out on Facebook and on our Twitter feed good day